That's fine. Um, I, ha I have something I believe from the Lord to share. Um, I know I think what he wants to say. I'm not quite sure how to say it. Um, so, cut a bit of slack this morning, if you will. Um, earlier in the meeting, um, we, were t we were hearing about the way and Jesus being the way maker. And inevitable verse came to mind. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the word that came to me, it was in... It, oh, we're a bit echoey. Thanks, Ron. Um, want, wanting the way, looking for the way through our difficulties, looking for the way through our problems and our way in life. And I, I know most of you know this and you've walked in it, but the Lord doesn't say there is a way. He says, I am the way. Um, and I think, I'll, I'll try and expand this a little bit, but I think the word that the Lord's given me is, it's not about the Lord doing something detached from you that makes everything work. It's about the Lord being with you and going with you on the way. I, the picture that came to mind, I don't know if you've ever... Um, <laughs> watched a new road being build, built. As I used to drive to work all those years ago when going to work was a thing, um, <laughs> um, I used to drive up through Arbor Field and down um, sort of that way down towards uh, Farnborough. And they were building, a, I think, a new bypass from Shinfield, kind of circumventing all that. And I could see the machinery uh, kind of digging the, the cut through the land and and eventually roundabouts were put in and tarmac started to appear and lines get put on the road. And then eventually, of course, all the signs change and now you can drive down this new bit of road. A way has been made. Uh, and what occurred to me was that all the people who were working on that road have gone. The machines have gone, the people have gone, the, all the tools have gone, and now there's just a way. It's just an anonymous bit of tarmac that I can drive over. Someone's made a more efficient way for me to get to work. It doesn't actually help me at all because it's a completely different route, but that's not the point. Um, but someone's made a more efficient way to go through your day. But that's not how God wants to be to us. Not just a more efficient way to get from A to B. Not just to lay down a bit of anonymous black tarmac in our lives and for us to walk on it. What he actually, I think, wants us to do is to come, as it were, to the unchanged field, stand at the gate in the fence and say, walk with me. We'll, we'll get from A to B. Um, <clears throat> Jesus said, um, you search the scriptures, for in these you think you have eternal life, but you will not come to me. The scriptures are, are the most important possession that we have. They are the word of God. They are the oracles of God. It, it, it was the chief blessing of being a Jew that you had the oracles of God in your hands. If, if there was something precious that you wanted to have in this world, this book is the single most precious possession that you can have. And yet, it is next to useless if it does not cause you to come to the author. The Bible is not meant to be a handbook to life. It has much wonderful advice. Um, and those who are gifted in the scriptures can open it up and they can explain it to us and they can help us to receive it and understand it. But ultimately... The whole purpose of the scriptures is to bring us to Christ. Understanding is wonderful. Knowing what it means, being able to have a, a, a grasp of the, sort of the flow of the story of salvation is, is wonderful. It, it, it gives you, a, it's awesome. It, it makes you look at God, as we were hearing earlier, and all the things he's done, the plan he's made, and it, it's staggering. It's staggering how the scriptures all hold together, how one story flows into another, how one person's life demonstrates some principle you'd never learn through just reading the Haynes Book of Christianity. 
Um, simply X. <laughs> Andy will understand that. Um, anyone who's read the Haynes book says, whenever it says simply do this, you know you're in for a hard time. Um, <laughs> And the Bible never says, simply do this. It just points. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The first thing the Bible does is to point you to your creator and maker and the glory and the splendor of what he's done. And the rest of the book is simply pointing you through all these people to him. Was it Wesley? Was it one of his hymns or said, I, 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 I send you unto him? The most gifted Preachers of all time, all, the only useful thing anyone who's preached has ever done, being a bit hyperbolic, is to send people to Christ. Maybe with a bit extra knowledge, maybe within that moment, like Marcus said, when, when you're in a difficult circumstance, you, you know where to turn, you read the scriptures, you hit, read it, but it's receiving the word of God that has an impact. It's not just because you've got proof texts for each particular situation. And you can go and turn to that and say, okay, if I read that verse, everything will be okay. It won't. The scriptures work, as it were, when they are received because you're receiving the person behind the scriptures. You're putting all your weight on him. And when God says, do not be afraid, it's not that you're not afraid because the Bible says, don't be afraid. It's because you receive that. It's because God has said, do not be afraid. With the words, do not be afraid, come the promise that almighty God's hand is going to undergird you and carry you and strengthen you and be with you. The whole emphasis of the scripture is this relationship that you have with God. And read a little bit. This is, I want to just read some of Psalm 23. Um, Um, I'll just read what she does. Let's read the whole thing. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The most important word in that psalm is you and he. It, the writer doesn't say, David doesn't say, you have given me a set of instructions that will help me through these difficult times. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Not the Lord has explained to me what shepherding is. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Not he advises me, but he actually teaches me how to do it. He leads me beside the still waters. Doesn't just tell me where there are some still waters. He restores my soul. Doesn't just give me a, a self-help book on restoring my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have given me a few verses that will help me. You are with me. You are with me. If in, if in your valleys, if the, the, the picture here of someone isn't it, walking through a valley and the, the shadow is kind of overcasting them and it's, it's like death to them, there's this kind of creeping death. He's traveling through this darkness and he says, it's okay because you are with me. I know you're with me. I sense it. I feel it. I know it. It's not just because I've, I, I can remember a few verses. It's because you're with me. When, when Moses parted the Red Sea or God parted the Red Sea and Moses with them, you know, Moses went, went with them. Moses didn't just stand on the banks of the Red Sea and, well, off you go, chaps. Have a good time. Let me know if that works. He went with them. God goes with them. He goes with us. <clears throat> um, John chapter 14. Sorry, I've, I kind of got a scattergun of verses that came to mind as, as this thought was unpacking in my mind. 
I'll be a couple more minutes. Um, John chapter 14. Um, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. The, the Christian life is about a life lived in the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling in us. Without him, we have not got the power to live this life. But if you have him, you have all the power of the risen Son of God in you. And therefore, make it all your business to have fellowship with him, to pray with him, to talk with him. Even if you don't pick up your Bibles during the day, are you talking to him? In your mind, is there a conversation going on with your God? Lord, what do I do here? Lord, I've just remembered this. I've seen that. Do you remember this? I wonder what will happen about that. Lord, this tr thought is troubling me. I just need to let it go. The Christian life is a life lived with a permanently resident, perfect counsellor who will listen to every thought, trouble, difficulty, who will sit with you in your tears and rejoice with you in your rejoicing. It's a life. It's not a textbook. And what the Lord desires for us is to live this life with him. <clears throat> um, Rev uh, last verse, I think. Revelation chapter 19. Uh, verse 10. Now, this is John speaking. He's fall, fallen down at the feet of an angel. And the angel says, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We're not even to seek solace or understanding from the mightiest creatures of God's creation. We are to worship God. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what is the testimony of Jesus? It is, it, is, it is the witness of all that he has done in Scripture for yourself. We heard this morning of a wonderful testimony. We need to speak the word of God to ourselves. We need to speak Christ to ourselves, to speak testimony to ourselves, both individually and corporately. We need to remember the wonderful works of God. Wasn't that what happened on the day of Pentecost? They spoke and the people said, we've all heard the wonderful works of God. It's the wonderful works of God that tell us of his character, his purpose, his person. And remind us of the promise. And when we know that we have him, we know that we have all the promise of him in us. So I think my, the, the word of the Lord I think came to me this morning was, come to me, receive me, receive the Lord, receive Jesus Christ. Because that's where your life is, that's where your overcoming is, that's where your victory is. Learn the scriptures, remember them, commit them to memory, learn the doctrines, love the Bible, and then put it aside and love the author. Put, it, put the Bible down from time to time and commune with your God. Speak with him and speak his word to yourself. When others speak, receive what he said. I remember, last thing, I remember when I first came to this church, I, I was, I think I've shared this so many times, I, I was sat in, in the meeting and I'd heard someone preach and it was, it was, um, it was mind-blowing what, what Ron Bailey was saying at that time. And someone came and sat next to me and said, is that the first time you've received? And I thought to myself, received what? 
But I knew God had come. Something had happened to me that wasn't just some explanation of all my troubles and difficulties. It was actually this God had come in person and spoken to me and was with me and was wanting to work the rest of my life with me. Brethren, we cannot live on the dry word. We live through the living word in us. Don't neglect it and do not be content to not live in it. As I say most seriously, if you do not know this testimony, this witness, this life, you do not have him. You need him. That is not to put you, send you away, but to exhort you, find him. Otherwise, you are going to get to a point where it won't work anymore. Because all your strength, understanding, ability to press on, it will run out. By his grace, it will run out. Because if it's not through him, it's not him.